A shortage of emergency accommodation and social housing has in part forced an increasing number of Queenslanders out on the street. And those sleeping rough are more likely to have a long-term mental illness. Joel Calci, who suffered from schizophrenia, lived in this park opposite Toowoomba Hospital for more than six months. And he was very softly spoken. He would just come up, get his pies and sausage rolls and a bit of bakery stuff and nice hot coffee and off he'd go. Tony Hurl runs a community kitchen in Toowoomba, feeding up to 100 people each night. And yet he still remembers a polite, well-dressed local man called Joel from more than four years ago. We meet all sorts of people, um, all walks of life, and um, Joel was certainly one of those ones that was, you remember, you remember because of his manners. Did he ever tell you why he was sleeping rough? No, no. Back, back when we first started, everybody is there obviously for a reason, so we just like to um, help out where we can and very few questions were, were raised. Joel Kalchi stopped visiting Tony's kitchen sometime in late 2020. The next time Tony Hurl saw Joel Kalchi was on the television, something the charity worker is still trying to come to terms with. I can't say that I predicted something like that would happen, but it certainly is, is very, um, very disturbing. Joel Calci murdered six people and injured another 12, including a nine-month-old baby, during a terrifying knife rampage through the Westfield Mall at Bondi. The slaughter only stopped when a police officer shot him dead. Since then, the nation has been asking, why would someone commit such an atrocity? It's difficult. It's horrendous. It's... I can't put it into words. Joel Couchy's father, Andrew, struggled to talk about his son's mental illness. He was a tormented soul. <laughs> he was tormented and, and frustrated and, 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 and I'm sorry that he's done this to your children and to this nation, I mean, there's nothing I can say that can take away the pain that my son has caused. This is the street where Joel Kalchi grew up and where he lived from time to time as an adult. Now, the neighbours who have spoken to are understandably devastated and very concerned about Joel Kalchi's parents. One neighbour said to me, she understands mental health is complicated, but in this case she feels the system failed. We need to invest more money in mental health and around mental health, getting these people the help that they desperately need. If you're living or sleeping rough, you don't have access to that. What's the state of services for mental health in Toowoomba at the moment? A long waiting list, unfortunately, you know, and we're hearing 6, 12, 18 months for the basics. Joel Calci did get some help for his schizophrenia. He was treated in the Queensland public system up until 2012, when he was transferred to a private psychiatrist. And according to his parents, he started to come off his medication around 2019, with some medical supervision. He asked the doctor if he could come down on it, and, and she did it over a period of a number of years, very carefully giving him the warnings of what might happen. Within a year, though, he was sleeping rough. I don't know any of the details other than what I've heard on the news about, about his care, but it does seem like he did get lost in the, in, in, in the system. Neuropsychiatrist and Griffith University professor Harry McConnell says weaning someone off this medication requires close collaboration between the public health system, private psychiatrists and GPs. He says although Queensland Health does have case coordinators, there's not nearly enough. And what's really important is that communication. And that communication then needs to extend to community networks, to the family, to the, to the police, so that people are talking to each other and that, uh, and that people don't get um, sort of you know, lost between the cracks. 
As Calci came off his medication, he had a series of contacts with police. And although he was never charged or found guilty of a criminal offence, there's one incident that stands out. In January last year, Calci called police from his parents' home to complain his dad had stolen up to six of his knives. I was concerned about having those knives in my house. Queensland police confirmed they went to the house and talked to the parents, but said no further action was taken. We intersect with a lot of people in our community that have schizophrenia. Um, police are not um, mental health experts. They have to deal with things that are presented to them and what threat there was to the community. And at that time, there was no clear threat to the community and no action that could be taken by police. There's a whole network of communication here and, and, and a safety net that he missed out on. Uh, so part of that was the communication between the police and the public mental health services, but also that loss of the link between the public mental health services and community resources and the private sector and the family. That whole communication system was lost. We don't know if early intervention could have prevented the horrendous murders. Or what prompted such horrific acts, it's a question for the coroner. And mental health support services want to emphasise that people with severe conditions such as schizophrenia are more likely to be victims rather than perpetrators of violence. In the wake of this incident, people should really be mindful that we don't actually know what's happened yet. It's important not to make assumptions because mental illness impacts everybody in very unique ways. But those who had contact in the past with Joel Calci can't help but think, what if? I do believe if we would have got an inkling of, of something that was going to happen a bit before then, we could have probably been able to help. Let's hope that we can make society a better place for people with mental health issues. And if that story has raised any issues for you, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14 and for family and carer support, call the Association of Relatives and Friends of the Man Mentally Ill, ARAFMI, on 1300 554 660.